This is going to be a review of the heating curve and the cooling curve in case you wanted to go back over what we learned in class. Remember that for the heating curve, we are plotting temperature versus time. As we go through the time for this heating curve, heat is being added. We have three slanted lines. The first slanted line is going to be where we have only the solid present. The solid is heating up. It is increasing in temperature. It has an upward slope. The second slanted line after the solid is the liquid only section. Again, since the slant is going upwards, the temperature is increasing. The third slanted line is where we have gas only. And again, the temperature is increasing. Any of the places where the temperature is increasing and we have only one phase, we can also say that we have an increase in kinetic energy. We can also say that at these individual phases, the kinetic energy is increasing, so the molecules are speeding up. Then we have our two flat lines, which represent our phase changes. The first phase change on the heating curve is melting. And remember, another word for melting is fusion. The second phase change is going to be vaporization, which is also known as boiling. Vaporization usually takes longer than melting because it takes more heat to overcome the intermolecular forces. Both of the phase changes increase in, in potential energy, and this heating curve represents an endothermic curve because heat is being absorbed by the substance throughout the time period that we're plotting. Next for the cooling curve, we're still plotting temperature versus time, but we notice now we have a downward curve. Our three slanted lines are going down. There's decrease in temperature on this cooling curve. Makes sense. We start with gas only. Remember, because the temperature is going down, that means the kinetic energy is going down. We go to liquid only. And again, decrease in temperature means that there is a decrease in kinetic energy. And our third slanted line is solid only. Again, temperature is decreasing, so we are decreasing the kinetic energy. Our two phase changes are, again, the two flat lines are going to be condensation, which is when we go from gas to liquid with a decrease in potential energy, and freezing or solidification from liquid to solid. And again, because it's the cooling curve, it's going to be a decrease in potential energy. This whole cooling curve represents an exothermic process. For the cooling curve, we are releasing heat as we are going from gas to liquid to solid. And this is the end of our review of the heating curve and the cooling curve.